So do you think you're a good person? Good enough to go to heaven when you die? Well, if you're confident of that, let's do a little test to see if you're really good enough to enter into God's presence. When God judges us to see if we're good enough, he's going to use a specific standard to judge us against. And that standard is his law. He's going to judge us to see how well we've kept his law. The first law states, you are to have no other gods apart from the Lord your God. And elsewhere it states that you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. So have you kept this law perfectly, or have you broken it? The second law states that you must not have any idols. An idol is anything that replaces God as first place in your life. It could be shopping, football, rugby, holidays, or a career. Is there something in your life you value more than God? So have you kept the law perfectly or have you broken it? The third law states that you must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. So have you ever misused his name, said OMG, or used the name of the Messiah JC as an expression of shock or disgust? Have you ever taken the name of the most powerful being in all of existence and used it as a curse word? So have you kept this law perfectly or have you broken it? The fourth law states that you must remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So do you have a special time in your week where you honour the Lord, where you give thanks to all that he has provided for you and when you spend time worshipping him? So have you kept the law perfectly or have you broken it? The fifth law states that you must honour your father and mother. Elsewhere it states that if anyone curses their father or mother, they are worthy of the death penalty. Now to honour your parents means to do good by them, to treat them with utmost respect, and especially to look after them in their old age. So have you kept this law perfectly, or have you broken it? The sixth law states that you must not murder someone. And Jesus took one step further. He said that if you harbour hatred in your heart towards someone else, you have already broken this law, internally in your heart. So have you kept the law perfectly or have you broken it? The seventh law states that you must not commit adultery. And Jesus also stated that if you look with lust upon someone else, you have already committed adultery with them in your heart. So have you kept this law perfectly or have you broken it? The eighth law states that you must not steal. Size or cost is irrelevant. Whether it's downloading pirated music or films, taking some pens from work or robbing a bank, theft is theft and anyone who commits theft is a thief. So have you kept this law perfectly or have you broken it? The ninth law states that you must not lie. Like stealing, size is irrelevant. Whether you consider it a small lie, a white lie, or a whopping great big fat lie or deception. Someone who tells lies is a liar and you only have to tell just one lie to be a liar for the rest of your life. So have you kept this law perfectly or have you broken it? And the final tenth law states that you must not crave, be envious for or desire someone else's property. This is called coveting and it can lead to all kinds of sin. So have you kept the law perfectly or have you broken it? Now, if God were to judge you today according to the law, would he find you innocent or guilty of breaking it? Would you be considered a saint or a sinner in his eyes? Would he welcome you into heaven or cast you into hell for breaking his law and treating his holiness as if it were nothing special? Maybe you're saying to yourself that from now on you're going to be a better person and not do so many bad things. Or maybe you're saying to yourself that you did these things a long time ago. Well, reformed behavior and the passing of time doesn't erase crime. Just try telling a human judge that. He would laugh at you and still send you to jail. No, you need someone who can pay for your sin. Someone who really does have the power to erase all of your sins once and for all. His name is Jesus the Messiah. He died on the cross as a penalty for your sins, was buried in the tomb, and on the third day God raised him 
back to life. Today, if you repent of your sins and fully trust in him and his death for you, then you can be legally acquitted of your sins. You can be legally acquitted because he has paid the penalty on your behalf. You can be set free from the fear of going to hell because of what Jesus did for you, because he loves you. I'll now leave you with Jesus' own words. I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, verse 6.